For quite some time I've been kicking around the idea of building some sort of bicycle powered generator. I've seen all sorts of examples of this done by other people, often using a car alternator, to varying degrees of success. Not sure if I'd ever actually get around to trying it myself. My friend recently asked if I wanted an old recumbent exercise bike that he was looking to get rid of. Being that the main ingredient of this contraption had fallen into my lap, what better time than now to actually try building this thing? And while I have surely absorbed a good amount of knowledge from my dad, who is an electrician and electrical engineer, I'm not remotely an expert in any of this. So my objective is to make a bike power generator in as simple a way as my lack of expertise necessitates and to buy as few parts as possible. So I hit up my various spare parts bins in the basement to figure out what I had to work with. Now the bike itself is obviously the biggest component, but the next necessary component I need is the actual generator. And for that I'm using a medium sized DC motor. Basically every DC motor is also a generator if you want it to be. That is, if you attach a power source to make it turn, it's a motor. But if you turn it manually, such as with a bicycle and drive belt, it's a generator. And since I'm trying to make this thing from spare parts I already have, I'm using a 24 volt DC motor that I previously purchased for a different project. So all that being said, let's get into it. Let's take another look at the recumbent bike we're going to be mutilating for this project. I really like that it has this vertical part that curves slightly towards the seat because it seemed like the perfect place to mount a motor such that it lines up with the pedals and more importantly the pedal pulley. And since the little digital display was already broken I had no qualms with removing and trashing it. The first thing I really have to do is start deconstructing this bike. I'll get the plastic body panels out of there and now I can really see what I'm working with. It's pretty clear how this thing is put together. Moving the pedals turns a pulley which is connected to a heavy flywheel. This flywheel makes for smoother pedaling and the adjustable tension feature is also incorporated into it. And as much as I'd like to figure out how to keep the flywheel in the mix because again it really does contribute to smoother pedaling, I don't see a simple way to incorporate it into my idea right now. I would need to dramatically modify some part of this to make it work since I need the pedal pulley for a different purpose and there isn't really any good way to put two belts on this at the same time. I'll get that digital display out of there as well as the resistance adjustment knob. I also realized that these short welded on handlebars on the vertical tube are going to be in the way so I need to cut those off and get them out of there. I can't really figure out how they would be used during normal operation of this exercise bike anyway since I can't even remotely reach them while sitting in the seat. Anyway, I'll cut them off with a Dremel and then grind down the bit of jagged metal left behind. Now that the bike is stripped down about as much as it needs to be, I can start figuring out how to start attaching my components. This is the 24 volt DC motor I'm going to be using. After doing this project, I've determined that this surely isn't the best motor to use for this exact application, but it's the one I already had laying around and I was determined to use it. Next, I need to mount the motor onto the vertical tube and in such a way that the motor pulley lines up directly above the pedal pulley. I ended up making a simple mounting plate out of a thin piece of wood. It would be great if this was somehow adjustable, but in trying to keep this as simple as possible, I basically just made it to bridge the gap where the holes in the digital display mounting point did not match up with the motor's mounting holes. Since this contraption will be belt driven, I need to attach some sort of belt pulley to the motor axle. I got this little pulley and had to fashion a small spacer to make it attach snugly, but it seems to do the job. Next I need a belt. I found some old 6mm belting in the basement and decided to try using that. It's definitely not the best belt to use mostly because it is not quite wide enough. I did order some wider belting, but it has to come from overseas and I don't expect to see it for about a month. So in the meantime, I'm determined to make this narrow little belt work. I needed to make a custom sized belt, which means figuring out a way to connect the ends to create a loop after cutting it to the size I need. After doing some research, using super glue seems to be one way to do it. That ended up working, 
though I hate using glue and cannot help but make a mess of things. So after gluing the belt together and ungluing myself from the belt, it was time to try it out. I got it into place wrapped around both pulleys. Right away I could tell that the belt was just slightly too loose. This is where an adjustable motor mounting plate would have been useful because I could pull it more taut that way. But I found a different way. One of the parts I removed from the bike while disassembling it was this tension pulley. It pressed against the flywheel belt with the help of a small spring in order to keep the belt nice and taut. So I cut a short piece of wood and bolted it in place using the hole that the adjustable resistance knob used to mount in. Then I bolted on the tension pulley contraption in such a way that the pulley presses against my belt with a little pressure. This seemed to work okay and the belt no longer slipped around the pulleys, but that wimpy little belt now kept trying to work itself right off the side of the pedal pulley. The side walls of that pulley are really too short and the fact that the motor pulley isn't perfectly centered over the top of it made that belt slide off pretty frequently. So I came up with one more band-aid fix. Using some rigid foam board and Gorilla Tape, I fashioned a makeshift belt keeper honor. As janky as this seemed, it actually worked really well. The belt hasn't managed to slip a single time since adding this. Now that all the mechanical ingredients are in place, I can start messing with the electrical. Now earlier I mentioned that this motor isn't the greatest for my application, and here's why. While this motor is sold and used by people as a component for making a 12 volt generator, it requires a pretty significant amount of RPMs in order to generate 12 or more volts. Whether being used with a wind turbine or a bicycle, it seems like it has to be geared in such a way that the motor spins much faster than what my setup right here is able to do. Pedaling about as fast as I can comfortably maintain for any amount of time, this motor is only putting out about 1.5 volts. That means I am not going to be charging a 12 volt battery with this setup unless I dramatically augment the electrical or mechanical functions or both. A different motor that produces more voltage at lower RPMs would really be ideal for this little recumbent bike and its little pulley. So while I am resolved to circle back and figure out how to modify this to make it put out at least 12 volts, I am going to at least prove the concept with this current configuration and set it up in a way that lets me charge something like a cell phone battery where my starting point of 1.5 volts is going to be adequate. I got some of these USB booster circuits. These cost about 89 cents. These little circuits will take an input of 1.5 volts and boost it to just over 5 volts. This should enable me to charge a cell phone, USB power bank, or similar. The wiring of this setup is very simple. All I need is a couple wires and a small rectifier diode. Regardless of the output capacity of my generator, a rectifier diode is a must-have because it allows the juice to only flow in one direction, from the motor to the battery. In this case, my phone battery. Without the diode, here's what happens. The motor, acting as a generator, puts juice into the battery. And now the battery has some juice in it, which in turn tries to power the motor. By adding one rectifier diode, this cannot happen. To test it all out, I soldered the diode to the positive terminal on my USB booster circuit and then used some alligator clips to attach the motor. I've also got a USB voltage meter plugged into the circuit. I start pedaling and voila, I'm generating about 5.1 volts. Now that I know it all works, it's time to make my installation a little more clean. To make sure the wires, my phone charger cable, and everything else is free and clear of the moving parts, including my legs, I'll run a couple wires along the length of the bike frame with the help of some zip ties. I'll solder that diode in line on the positive wire, just so I can sort of get it out of the way. Then solder the wires to the booster circuit, and some simple electrical tape will help hold my USB circuit firmly in place at the back of the machine. And I'm done. Now to charge my phone. As long as I keep pedaling, the phone keeps charging. For the sake of proving the concept, I'm calling this whole thing a success. A few comments to wrap up this video. I definitely still aim to figure out how to make this setup work in such a way that I can charge a 12 volt battery. That seems more useful to me than using it as a cell phone charger, considering I could use any number of small, inexpensive solar or wind charging gizmos to do that but having a 12 volt battery would allow me to charge and power a wider array of things, not to mention having a supply of power that I can charge now and use later. 
I also want to think a bit more about how I can bring that metal flywheel back into the mix. The pedal action on this is sort of loose and feels kind of clumsy. Because there is not a large wheel like on a standard exercise bike, or really much resistance at all except for the tiny amount that this motor provides, it actually feels more difficult to pedal with nice smooth strides. This may not be the most practical means of generating power, but it was a fun project and I learned quite a bit. I guess I can look at it as yet another redundancy to have on hand in my power generating preps. And I'm also trying to think of other pedal powered contraptions I could make out of this thing. One idea I'm already kicking around is a pedal driven butter churn. Not sure if it'll happen, but it's certainly a possibility. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date on all our latest stuff, including future DIY contraption videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.